Working with the DVD presets to Adobe Premiere are pretty cool, but that's not the only way you can output. So let's look at a few more ways that we can take our masterpiece, our artwork here, and give it to the world. Now if we go up to Publish and Share, one of the options below these two is Online. Select that one. Now if you're going online, you have things like Facebook, well even YouTube if you want to use it. It's a very straightforward procedure. It's not going to have the menu. It knows it doesn't need that. So you don't have to worry about, well, I got to get rid of the menu. You do have some presets. You can go flash. You can go PAL, European, high definition video, which is actually pretty cool when you think about it. And YouTube is doing some really good stuff with HD. So you decide to go maybe HD here. Down here, it's telling you what it's going to do. And you click the next button. Now, this would be the same for anything else. It's going to ask you for authorization. Now, I have an account with YouTube and Facebook and the other, you know, I've got the accounts. The authorization says, and this is what I love, I'm not saving a file and then figuring out how to open my account, access my account, and then figure out how to put it in there. It's going to do it for me right here. So if I click Authorize, and I do have, like I said, the account, it's going to do it for me automatically. Ten seconds later, I've got my YouTube video for the world to see. If you want to use Publish and Share for this, you've got it. Let me get out of here. Let's go into Computer. Now for Computer, and I actually use this one a lot, you've got a lot of different options up here. I use QuickTime, I'm a Mac person, and it works in Windows too, but QuickTime's kind of a Mac format. But I'm talking about I want the highest quality I can get because I want to move this video that I massaged in elements, I don't know, into something else, maybe even to Final Cut Pro. So I can choose my option here. Again, NTSC, PAL, HD. I'm going to go NTSC DV 16.9. Now you do have the option to give it a name and where do you want to save it? You can browse here. If you click Advanced, you get a few other options. Like you can change things in here. You say, well, actually, you know what? I think I could really get this thing small if I go H.264. And yeah, that's a really great compression algorithm. And I think I'll leave this at 100%. And maybe I want to change the basic settings in terms of width and height, the frame rate. Take that down to about 12. It'll make it a smaller file. Aspect ratio. What's going on a computer? So I think I'm going to try squares. Render at maximum depth right here basically means give it the best you can when you're fixing it, but I'm going to take longer to do it. Okay, so it creates a better file for you if you want to use it. So we keep going on. We make some changes here. If you click OK, it's going to ask you to give that a preset name so you can use it again. If you say cancel, it's going to stop everything that you've done. Let me go ahead and just click cancel on that. If I click save, it would create, according to my parameters, a movie out of this, not with the DVD menu, just the movie itself. So that's another way that we can use this program. Let me go back here. Last one is mobile phones and players, which I do like this one. This one's kind of neat, especially if you've got an iPhone or an Android or whatever it is. And number one, what do you want to use? Now I do, I will admit, have a lot of Apple products. I've got iPods and iPhones and iPads and ay i I got a lot of that stuff. So I might choose that one. Or I might choose just to do an audio podcast. I've done those before on iTunes. I've just been a little bit busy to keep up with them. You've got a generic mobile phone right here. But if I go to the iPod option here, I can then choose a preset here. Like I'm going to my Retina Display iPad, widescreen, high quality. I can give it a name, save it, change some of those advanced settings if I want to, and then click Save. Now when you click Save, it creates a file. You take that file and you move it into iTunes. You then plug your iPad in or iPhone or whatever. You sync it, you got it. Let me go ahead and click back. There are so many cool options here. The whole thrust of this course is to show you how to do good video, but also what do you do with it once you've got it? And as you can see, we have basically any option that we want. Let's go ahead and save it if you want to. And we'll call this one a wrap.